Hello everybody! In this video I'll show you how to build such a large flat copper coil. And you might ask yourself what do I need this for, so I will just show you some applications for this coil before we start with the tutorial on how to build it. So mainly I'm using this coil to inform my structured water with a certain frequency. In this case it's 528 Hz. So maybe already able to hear the coil hum, but you can hear it even better if I just bring a magnet array close to it. Any type of magnet will do the job. And yeah, you can clearly hear this 520 hertz frequency that is played on the coil. So the coil is just connected to an audio amplifier which gets its signal from a frequency generator. I have made a video in more detail about this topic last year, so if you're interested, watch this video. And yeah, what I'm doing is I'm just placing this jar filled with structured water on top of the coil and this will align and structure the water with this frequency very effectively because as you have seen just before the field is actually quite strong and large with this type of coil like this has a weight of 350 grams of copper so I'm using a 0.4 millimeter copper wire and hundreds of turns of it and yeah I also show you another interesting thing that you can do with this coil. So now I turned down the frequency to around 15 Hertz and if I just take some neodymium magnets like this one and place them on top of here you will see that they will, they will start to spin like this and yeah this is just a fun little thing that you can do. You can visualize with that the oscillating and rotating magnetic field of this coil quite well, as you can see here. So, um, if you don't want to build this coil yourself, I also sell it in my shop. So the link for it is in the video description. Also all the 3D printing files needed for this project are also in the link in the video description. And there is also a giveaway of this coil. So I'm giving away one for free. If you want to participate in that, just leave me a comment under this video and I will just pick a random comment and announce the winner in my next video. So having said all of that, let's start with the tutorial. So to build the coil holder itself, you need to 3D print these two plates. They make up the coil holder and they are just glued together like this. And it's really important that the spacing between these two plates is even. And to ensure that, I also 3D printed these two spacer plates. Okay, so you just place them like this on top of the bottom plate. And then you just add some glue in this center hole and place the top plate on top of here. Wipe off any excess glue that comes out here. Make sure that you use enough glue, but not too much and let the glue dry. And what you can also do is just add some weights on top of here. This will help to push down the plates on each other. The black spaces will ensure an even spacing between the two plates. And with this process, you will have a really nice coil holder. So let's continue to the winding process itself. To wind the coil, I'm actually using a coil winding machine like this here. I got this real cheap for 35 euros on Amazon. It's not the best one, but it does the job just fine. And to start off, I'm taking this enameled copper wire. It's 0.4 millimeters in diameter. And this coil holder has two holes as you can probably see here on the side we have one here that goes to the inside and there's also a second hole in here and the purpose of this is you take the wire and put it inside here and then you have to put the wire through the out at the inner hole and then again loop it out through this hole and then the wire comes out here. Um, yeah, this ensures that, that the start of the wire just comes out on the inside of the coil holder and is fixed. 
and it's not like that the wire comes out on the outside of the coil which wouldn't look that nice and is also impractical if you want to place something on it. Um, let me just do this and then I'll show you how to attach it to the coil winding machine. So now I have attached the wire to the coil holder. It comes in here and the wire comes out at the bottom hole, then goes back to the top hole in here and the spare wire, which is used to connect the coil, comes out here on the small top hole. And after you have done that, you just attach the coil holder to the coil winding machine. And as you can see here, on this side I already also attached a 3D printed bracket. The files for these are also in the video description. And this is just to ensure that the two holders or the spaces um, that they are level and they will, yeah, to ensure that the gap distance will stay the same. Also, after you attach this holder to the coil winding machine, you attach a second bracket. This is also just to ensure that the spacing between these two blades is the same. And let me just adjust the camera a little bit so you can see it better. And yeah, what you can see here is that we still have some slight gaps here on this side. And what we do against this is I just use some tape and tape these plates against these outer plates. So like this, that the spacing between the two spaces is even and I will show you later why this is very important. So let me just tape it to the sides and I'll show you then how to continue. Now I have attached um, these tape strips on here. And this is just to hold these inner side plates to these black plates. And this ensures an even spacing in between here. And this is very important because if the spacing is not even all around, so you can see this, if I turn it, you can see the spacing is always the same. If this is not the case, the spool will yeah, reach the outer end on the, where the spacing is smaller sooner than, for example, when the spacing is larger here, there will be still more distance. Yeah, obviously because the wire will fill up the space earlier when the spacing is smaller. And then you won't end up with a round coil, but more like an oval shaped. And we don't want that. So to start the winding itself, I have just attached the spool with the wire. Yeah, <laughs> in a very practical solution, let's say like this down here. So the, uh, the roll of wire can rotate freely. And what I'm doing is I'm holding the wire with one hand and always, really always during the winding process, keep tension on the wire. So never let this wire loose. If you do so, make sure that you unwind a few turns and really um, make sure that the wire is always under, yeah, under tension. And so I'm holding this also with a glove on it because otherwise it would yeah, hurt my finger if I do this for a longer time. And then I start winding the coil like this. And you can actually do this with the coil winding machine quite fast. You can see that we already get a few turns on it. Don't mind the turn counter on this machine. It doesn't work. I get I guess you get what you pay for, but I don't mind it. I don't need the counter. And you can already see in the center, uh, yeah, you get more turns on the coil. It starts to grow. And yeah, it took, probably takes like 15 minutes to wind the coil fully. So I will just do the winding until we are finished and show you the end result and what to do next. 
so I don't bore you with the entire winding process. After you finish the winding, um, you take the two ends of the wire, one comes out here and one is here. Make sure the two ends are about the same length and then you twist them like this. Like really make sure that the wire is still under tension while you do this and then yeah just twist the wire like this and this makes sure that the wire still is under tension and doesn't come loose and do a few twists like this which will ensure the wire stays nicely where it is and yeah after that you can remove the tape just like this if it is underneath the copper wire that's no problem you can gently pull it out like this and just remove all of the tape strips which i will do off camera quickly now i've removed all the remaining tape and to fix the entire coil and make sure that everything stays in place and finish it up i will just add a layer of glue all around this remaining gap here so i will just show you the start of it this is just some liquid plastic glue that i used to glue the two plates together initially initially <laughs> and as you can already see uh, make sure to fill the gap up with the glue. Take your time with this and be careful that you don't overspill anything. And yeah, go all around the coil and just fill up the remaining gap like I do here. So now i finished the layer of glue on the outside here and you can already see this gives the coil a really nice finish and this also ensures that these outer plates don't come apart later and the coil is fixed nicely inside here and protected so that's actually it that's how to wind a coil like this um, just let the glue dry for an hour or so and then you can disassemble everything and yeah you end up with a nice coil like this that you can use for set purposes that i showed you in the beginning of the video also don't forget to participate in the giveaway if you want to just leave a comment and i hope this helps some people because i couldn't find anywhere on the internet to buy such a coil and i really needed one maybe you need one as well if you don't want to do everything yourself and buy a coil winding machine you can find them in my shop other than that i hope this tutorial helped you maybe there are better ways to do this um yeah this was just my way and i think it's a quite cheap and practical way on how to do it and get a nice coil so thanks for watching have a nice day and goodbye